Once every few decades, a plane redefines what a modern airliner is capable of delivering for the airlines and also for the passengers. In 1957, Boeing changed the game with its first jet-powered airliner, the 707. In 1969, Boeing turned the airline industry upside down with the introduction of the 747. And in 1994, Boeing did it again with the 777. Now by the late 1980s, the Boeing company unveiled their proposals for the larger 767, which was dubbed to be the 767X. Design and operational proposals were presented before the airlines, but they weren't interested in the proposal due to the success of the current 767 variants. The market wanted an even wider fuselage, a flexible cabin layout, and better fuel efficiency compared to any Boeing 767 variant. Now preparing for the retirement of the Boeing 727, the company announced in 1978 the 757 narrowbody alongside the 767 to compete against the Airbus A330. They were also flirting with the idea of the Boeing 777, which was initially meant to be a trijet, to go against the DC-10 and the L-1011. Despite this however, there was still a gap in the market between the 767 and the 747 which needed to be filled. And in 1998, Boeing reacted to the market and realized that brand new design was needed, and they couldn't further stretch any model which was in service, so hence, the Boeing 777 idea was born. Now the design phase of the 777 differed from all previous Boeing planes. For the first time, airlines and their passengers had a role in the development of the plane. The philosophy of working together meant that the 777 was their most customer-oriented aircraft up to date. It was also the first commercial aircraft to be designed 100% by computers. Compared to the previous jets, where drawings were produced on paper, the 777 was essentially created on a 3D CAD software. This enabled the virtual 777 to be constructed, allowing Boeing engineers and designers to examine for interferences, and to test if the many thousands of parts were fit together before a prototype was manufactured. The 777 is larger than all other twin-jet or tri-jet planes and smaller than the 747, and it brings the twin-engine economic advantage to medium and long-haul markets. Now, in terms of the smaller details, it's the world's largest twin-jet airliner, with a capacity ranging from 317 to 396 passengers in a typical two-class configuration. It also has a range of 13,600 kilometers up to 15,800 depending on the variant, meaning that it can technically fly halfway around the world. But what made the 777 truly unique compared to other planes that they've designed is that the 777 was the first plane to feature fly-by-wire components. Another option which was considered for the 777-200 but which was ultimately dropped was the folding wingtips. This would allow the plane to use the same gates used by the DC-10s, the L-1011s, and the Airbus A300. But this option was ultimately dropped because the folding wingtips of the 777 would increase the empty weight of the aeroplane and it would add too much complexity for the airlines in terms of maintenance. This idea, however, will only be considered again years later for the Boeing 777X, which required just a folding wingtip of 3 meters. Now, the 777 was developed with the consultation of eight major airlines, which are ANA, American, British Airways, Cathay Pacific, United, and etc. These airlines were given a 23-page questionnaire on January 1990, asking what each wanted in their design. Now, the launch customer for the 777-200 was United Airlines, being delivered on June 1994, and later made their first commercial flight a year later from London Heathrow to Washington International. Now, Boeing initially planned the Triple Sound family to be a tri-jet series of aircraft so it can compete with the DC-10, the L-1011 TriStar, and later on the MD-11, the A330, and the A340. However, when times changed on the new ETOPS rules, airlines began operating the 767 on long-distance overseas routes that didn't really require the capacity for larger airliners. The Trijet 777 was later dropped following market studies that favoured the 757 and other 767 variants. On April 9, 1994, the first 777 was rolled out in a ceremony and the first flight took place two months later. This initiated the start of a flight test programme that lasted for 11 months that was more extensive than testing for any previous Boeing model. 
Now the 777 has three main variants, which include the original 777-200, which entered commercial service in 1995, then the extended range 777-200ER made its arrival in 1997. A stretched version which could carry more passengers but had less range was introduced in 1998, which is the 777 now these planes mainly have three engine choices, which are the General Electric which is the most known and used engine on the 777, the Pratt & Whitney PW4000 and the Rolls-Royce Trent 800. Since then they have been collectively referred to as the 777 Classics or also known as the first generation 777s. Later on Boeing developed three new variants which would be known as the second generation 777s. An extended range version of the 300, which is now known as the 300ER, entered commercial service in 2004. And after that, following the success of the extended range variants, Boeing developed a long range version known as the 200LR, which entered commercial service two years later after the 300ER in 2006. A freighter version was also launched, known as the Chopper Sound Freighter, which was later developed and introduced in February 2009. Now a third generation variant was launched in November of 2013 and it was given the name of 777X under this new development. Boeing decided to re-engine this new set of variants with the largest engine in the world, the GE9X which is the successor of the GE90. The plane will also feature a folding wingtip design, adding this to the 777X will also be given a new carbon fibre reinforced polymer wing. The 777X family will have two variants which will be the 8X and the 9X and quite possibly even the 10X. Also let's not forget the BBJ 777 family which are the corporate versions of the original 777 family. As of 2018, 1547 Boeing 777s of all models have been delivered. Now the 777 family is very distinctive with having of course two large engines. Its long raked wings, its six wheels on each main landing gear, its cool rest compartment and the blade shaped tail cone and many other features make the plane truly unique. The Boeing 777 family is a direct competitor to the Airbus A330 and the new Airbus A350. What will succeed the Boeing 777 family of the first and second generation and also the Boeing 747 will be the third generation 777X series and its main rival, the Airbus A350-1000. The first generation of the 777 is already being slowly retired one by one and the second generation will also be retired in the near future. The future of the Boeing 777 family is unclear, but we can rest assured as long as it is safe and profitable aircraft, it will be in service for many years to come. Thanks to the new wings, more efficient engines and a lighter structure, the plane is very fuel efficient and this in turn means lower emissions per passenger seat. Now since the Middle East and Asian airlines need medium and long ranges with fuel efficiency, the 777 is the answer for this demand since it can fly non-stop from Dubai to Los Angeles, Honolulu and Auckland for example. There are many other models that can fly these distances, but airlines need payload capacity between 300 and 360 passengers since this is the average capacity of these kind of routes. With flying full capacity and with two twin engines, the 777 is the most efficient model for these kind of routes. There's no doubt about it that the Boeing 777 deserves its worldwide success. Credit should also be given to the executives at Boeing on their great strategy to focus on the Middle East and also Asia, with the model being the most suitable answers for their demands. But regardless of how people determine the success of the 777, whether in terms of sales or how much profit it generates, the fact remains that the 777 has made incredible impact on the industry since the plane entered into service almost 20 years ago. Thank you so much for watching this Boeing History Timeline video. To learn more about the planes developed by the Boeing company, check out the other videos which are listed in the playlist. Leave your thoughts in the comments below 
and for more videos regarding other aviation content, be sure to subscribe and also leave a like. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next timeline video.